But schlong can only take you so far. Schlong is good for a month and a half. Is it? I don't know. It depends, I guess. Ask women. <laughs> Ask other men who enjoy the schlong. Personally, I would imagine month and a half, maybe six tops is probably the benchmark for good schlong. If yeah. you're really slinging that schlong, a year and change. Let me tell you about the two baddest cats in town. They're here to talk about random shit yeah. floating around. So grab yourself a drink, baby, if you please. It's just shoot the breeze with chafe and cheese. Well, chim chim churu and a ho um to welcome back and welcome to another rousing, riveting, rip roaring, rip torn, rip van winkle. Wow. Of an episode of Shooting the Breeze with Chafe and Cheese. I'm Chafe. I'm Cheese. And we're shooting the breeze today. Today, baby. Today we're live. You know we where we're did live it. from? Where? Glendale, California. Just where we needed to new be. New studio, new Chafe and Cheese Studios right in Glendale. How you feeling? How you like it? I think it's uh, good enough. Yeah, right in the heart of the Rancho Equestrian District. Why don't you tell them exactly where we are? We are at longitude 47.973, latitude 82.792. Good luck finding that. <laughs> yeah. It's been a while, my man. It's yeah. been uh, too long. It's been a minute. We took a little hiatus, a little break. We did. I took a hiatus to... Uh, life got real. Yeah, life got real, and I took a hiatus to create life. And what? here what? we are. I can't even fathom. You created life? Created life. You, you got one past the goal line. Yeah. You're over here. You're living in Burbank now. I am. With the wifey. Congratulations, yes. Mazel Mazel. You're yes. a married man now. Thank you. And you slipped one past. I didn't slip one past. Oh, I purposely got one in. Yeah, you're getting one in, and I'm committing mass genocide three times a day, but it's okay. What are you going to do? Yeah. What are you going to do? <laughs> so but what's it like? Being a father? Yeah. I got to know. I haven't seen you. We've been quarantining this whole time. It's up. It's down, it's exhausting, it's beautiful. His eyes are like the most the most naive eyes in the history of the sun, huh? and yet the most knowing. There's something within him that I feel like he, th their children are created on this earth and they know what they can do to their parents from a very young age. You think so? Like two months in, he, uh, he was sitting down, we had him in this little chair behind us, uh -huh. and we're eating dinner, trying to like bounce him while they're eating and doing that, and for like two minutes, uh -huh. maybe max, maybe like 30 seconds max, I let him kind of be on his own. Uh -huh. And all of a sudden he just goes, Meh! And I, oh shit, I picked him up, and then immediately he was like, <laughs> And knew that, like... He knew. He knew he can get me with his little cry. He knew he can manipulate me from a very young age. Now, let me ask you this. Important question. Age-old debate. Nature versus nurture. Where do you stand? Both. Both? Both are vital. You're a, you're a school... Oh, my bad. You're a school of both thoughts. Uh-huh. Wow. Yeah. So how much is nature? How much is nurture? Is it, like, straight down the middle, 50-50? I think... And it... how much do you think your nurture is going to fuck up his nature? That's all very interesting, and I hope my nurture only supports our innate Jewish nature. You know what I mean? Your Jewish nature. Yeah, I think uh, I think that nurture can do one of two things. It can either elevate what they already have or completely fuck up whatever they have. So really, it's 50-50. Uh, now, uh, it, say say your son was uh, uh, grew up with wolves. Uh-huh. What would that change? Like, how would that change his nurture? If he grew up nature. with wolves, he'd probably be very, very good at, at like, creating fire, killing killing animals. Yeah. Uh, you know, wearing little Mowgli-like outfits. It's in, it's all the rage. Basically, if you're, whenever anybody says raised by wolves, I go to the Jungle Book for some reason. But he was raised by a bear, wasn't he? He was raised by a bear. And a uh, Bagheera was a panther, I think. Ah, uh, wasn't he? Bagheera. I don't know. Great name, though. Never, I haven't seen that movie in a decade and you a half. You should go watch the Jungle Book. It's fantastic. I guess, it did get a re-release, huh? It's pretty great, except for the end. The end is very, very misogynistic. Really? There's a Remind whole, me. There's a whole song that the girl sings while she's getting a pail of water when he finally meets... You know, human beings. He uh -huh. sees this little girl. She's adorable. She's holding a little pail of water. And the only thing she says is a song that goes, Well, I must go to fetch the water till the day that I am grown. It's really fucked up. Wow, she's a water maid. <laughs> she's a water maid. Wow. 
I will have a handsome husband and a daughter of my own, and I will go to fetch the water till the day that I am grown. You have to have aspirations in life. That's not bad for a girl living in a jungle. I suppose, but I want her to reach higher, which is what I want my son, to reach higher. Right. You know? How very 2022 of you. And at the same time, I'm finding all these things with my son that... I'm not doing, but I want to instill in him. Huh. And it's very controversial within my own brain at a very young age. Already, I'm like thinking, I don't do enough reading or really I haven't. Re- When's the last time you read a book? A just, full book? Uh, about two weeks ago, I finished The Art of War. And before, wow, The Art of War. Yeah. Currently, I'm reading Fuck It. I'll start tomorrow, but I will finish it later. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and before that? Uh, hmm. What else did I read? Uh, oh, I, I uh, 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 oh, I was working on the Bible for a while. Oi, it's a heavy read. It Not is great. No, uh, the most read book in the world, and yet, uh, and yet, and yet. Well, the point is, yeah. How, how much reading are you doing? What are you reading these days? I haven't read a full book. I'm gonna be very honest. In at least two years, and a play doesn't count, right? No, I've read plays. I've read scripts. At least you know how to read. I can read. You're able. But now I'm starting to sit down with my son and I'm reading him these little fucking kids books and they're great, it's great and all that. Uh But I don't read myself, so how can I at some point be like, you gotta read that book. You should start reading books. Books are great for you if I'm the guy who's not reading books. So you're telling me you never read a a single baby book the whole time he was being born? No, I listen to podcasts. Wow. I listen to podcasts. I would read like articles online. I read a bunch of different like Mayo Clinic things. I read a bunch of different things. I did all my sort of research, but like the giant books that people get you that are like, you know, yeah. what to expect when you're expecting yeah. the new version. Nah, not so, for me. So you're telling me. Or if yeah. something happens and I'm like, oh shit, I don't know what it is. I'll go to a reference page in the book and read the little paragraph or like, I have a question about this. I'll go in the, in the index and find it. Wow. Yeah, but the whole book, nah. So uh, w- why do you think this is? Is it, is, is it an attention span thing? Are you just lazy? I think it's the way <laughs> I intake media now. I uh, listen to so many podcasts. Uh, I, lis- I watch a lot of television. I read articles. But I, the whole, yeah, maybe it's in my attention span. Maybe I have ADD and I don't, never really knew it. That would make sense. You think? Yeah. I'll tell you this. Huh? My, my wife knows me very well. She started me off small. She got me a Mel, Mel Brooks's autobiography called All About Me. That, I want that. I have it. I'll read it. When I finish, I'll give it to you. I'll see you I'll in tell you this. Years. It's been a month and a half. Yeah. I'm on page 62. Wow. <laughs> so, so that would only support my ADD theory. Slow and steady wins the race. But it's great. He's still in the war where I'm at, but you know. That sounds funny. It is somewhat. quite comical. It is somewhat. He's talk. He talks a lot about his uh, the food he ate there, but that's about it. Yeah, but yeah. So it, it takes me a, a, quite a while. So are, are you more like? Would you say you're more health health conscious now as a parent? You you got to take care of yourself to be there for your son. You making sure your son's alive. He's doing well. It's twofold, really, huh. because one, I don't have any time or energy to put into getting stoned or drunk. And two, I don't have any energy if I'm stoned and drunk. So I make the choice to say fuck it to the alcohol and the weed, and I haven't had a drink or smoked any weed in two months. Wow. Yeah. I've taken a break from the marijuana myself. Ah, good for you. Get that head right, you know? It's, It's getting there. It's, uh, it was a New Year's resolution for me. Last uh, time I got, well, I did take a couple puffs. The Rams Niners game. Go Rams. Go Rams. Super Bowl. Hey, Rams. Super Bowl. Bada Congratulations. Bing. Well, good for you. Uh, but other than that, that's it. I yeah. haven't had it. It's been over about now. It's uh, I've only smoked once in a month and two days. I think there is positive and positives and negatives to the marijuana plant. You know, yes, like with anything, you can abuse it. Absolutely. You know, you don't want to get up and roll a joint and start your day and like, but like a couple puffs with the pals. Eh. Yes, there was a time and place for the wake and bake. Correct. And I think when you've hit, I think past the age of 30, if you're waking and baking, unless you're able to make all the money that you do, like a Seth Rogen, like a Joey Diaz, Uh, you know, if you're able to make your living off of your weed smoking and able to be as creative and successful as you are, good for you. You have to be a personality. Yeah, but 
If you're Joe Schmo on the street or just scrapping away at this in his entertainment industry, you can't be fucking ripping ripping blunts at nine a.m. Yeah. Listen, you t- we're talking about health. The drug's good. Good for you. Thank Whether you. you wanted to do it or not, good for you. Yeah, it, 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 <laughs> I'd say good it was, it was 50-50 nature and nurture. Ah, uh, makes sense. Yeah. But ha- a public service announcement. I want to make a public service announcement to the, to the viewers, the listeners, the oh, tens good. and tens. This time of year, the air gets very dry. It does. And I got myself a new, a new gadget. And I got to tell you, I'm a new man. Oh. I'm a new man. Tell me. Tell me. I got a humidifier. It has changed my life. I'll tell you, it's a game changer. Oh my God. As a man who has asthma, as a man who has asthma, mm. as a man who never really had good lungs to begin with. Yeah. And bitch, then recently. You were bitch lungs for a long yeah, time. Yeah, bitch lungs when I used to smoke cigarettes. And now yeah. it turns out bitch lungs was asthma lungs. <laughs> oh. But a humidifier? Changed my life. He's absolutely a game changer. Changed my life. I, here's, the, here's the trick do not put it on high. No, too much. But have it on low all day. Mm. I did the the first day I got it. I made the mistake. I left it on high overnight, right next to my bed. I woke up with a sheen over my face. Yeah, you get very wet. Everything was damp. I wo- yeah. I woke up. I thought I was in a cirrus cloud. That makes sense. It was just <laughs> there was shit suspended in the air. I didn't know what was happening. Not even a cumulonimbus. No, no, it, it wasn't that much. No, no, but a nice fluffy cirrus. That's a that's a fair amount of water. But uh, uh, keeping it on low all day, I mean, it makes a huge difference. I didn't know it. I was getting kind of like a chest tightness. Yeah. And I thought I was dying. We live in LA. The air is terrible here. You no, know, you got to lube the lungs. Yes. You got to wake up the cilia yes. to kick out the crap. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? I do. So once once I did that, my whole uh, everything's gone. I feel better. My voice is better. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I, I, I'm singing high notes these days. There, That's one thing I can say definitively works. One that I have no idea if it works, and I have two of them. <laughs> Is an air purifier. Ah, well, yeah, I mean, it takes particulate out, right? Do I know that it's working? No, I don't necessarily feel a difference in but myself. You, you clean the filter, you see the dirt. Yeah, basically, in the in, in the very beginning of COVID, when everyone was going insane, everyone was wiping their fucking groceries, I also was like, uh, ah, I need to get a heavy-duty air, air air purifier, not to mention I also have asthma. So I was like, this will this will kill two birds with one air purifier. Yeah, I mean, it's not bad. Could no. be worse. No, not do, it's not. It's not uh, putting uh, fecal matter into the air. Exactly. And when my son was born, I said I'm going to start him out right. I got him both, so both live in his room, and that room is the cleanest room in the history of the sun. It's, 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 people can go just sit there and recuperate. They really can after a long illness. Sometimes I sit in there and just breathe. <sighs> exactly. Uh, yeah, it's good without him. Yeah, but I'm telling you, I'm a new man, man. I mean, everything. I was getting bloody noses. I'd wake up in the morning. I'd have, you know, I'd blow a nose, and there'd be a little. Do you do this? Huh? I get out of the shower, right? Yep. I blow my nose in the shower. I go, <laughs> in get the everything shower. out. Yeah, I, uh, you know, I hack up a lung in the shower. I try to get the lungs moving, <laughs> the airways flowing. Yeah. But then I get out of the shower. You know, I, I brush, I've brushed my teeth. I, I, put, I take the Q-tip. I put it in my ears. I'm mm-hmm. like, you know, I lotion the face. Yeah. Last thing I do. Last thing I do. I take a Q-tip. And I put it up each nostril. This is before we were doing COVID testing. I've been doing this for years. I get up in there and I get all the boogies out. I get all the boogies out of the nose. So I go for hours without having to blow my nose, without a, without a single booger coming out. Good for you. I'd say you're the only one I know who does that, but good for you. I, I learned it on set, actually. Yeah? Yeah, makeup, hair and makeup. They, before you go on camera, they would give me a Q-tip and say, get the shit out of your nose. So you Maybe you just happened to have had, had a heavy flow that day. Uh, oh, no, no, no. They did it all the time. <laughs> they never did it. I ne- never once, not once, had that has that happened to no, me. I, well, I, maybe I had a better mar- makeup artist, but my point is Perhaps. this. My point is this, and when I would do that, there would be a little blood on the cute. Mm. It's been a week, no blood. Congratulations. Thank you. These are the little life lessons that we all need. Yeah. Get a hair air purifier and a humidifier. <laughs> and also stick a Q tip up your nose. Why not? Why not? Practice for the test. <laughs> I gotta tell you, we got breaking news coming across the desk here. Oh, yeah? Yeah, Deadline.com. Unmasking of Rudy Giuliani on Fox's The Masked Singer prompts ju- prompts judges Ken Jong and Robin Thicke to walk off in protest. Yeah, I saw that. Hold on. Hold on. Rudy Giuliani's on The Masked Singer? Apparently. <laughs> Apparently. 
Clearly, he was the first one kicked off. No, apparently, they can't tell you more because he he's apparently stays on if you read the article more. Re- Wait, no. Yeah, they can't tell you when he's going off. No, they We aren't they- revealing which costume Rudy was in. In his, uh, no, they're not revealing the costume. His but exit it, episode won't air until next month, meaning he's still not. He's still he hasn't gotten kicked off immediately. You don't know that though. This is the new season. There, okay, interesting, interesting. But though I, I'm assuming he's the least good singer on the show. I would imagine so. I can't. I can't imagine this guy singing. That's one thing. Two. What did his hair dye look like under when he took the mask off? I'm sure it was everywhere. He was. It looked like he was in brown face. I'm sure. See, Rudy Giuliani is trying to do the thing that most people do when they when most when they lose the graces of society. They lean into the bullshit version of themselves and then make a total sham of themselves the rest of their career. I mean, let's think about this. We had uh, Sarah Palin on Mass Singer a, a season or two ago. Yeah. We had uh, Sean Spicer on Dancing with the Stars. Yeah. It's a it's the last stitch effort. It's the last stitch effort. I mean, this is a guy. Get yourself a singing or dancing show and see if you can get back into the good graces of America. Nine times out of ten, it doesn't work. This is a guy who is mired in lawsuits at the moment. Oh, yeah. And he's out there crooning in a costume on national television? What? Uh, what? Doesn't he have other things to worry about? What uh, network is... Uh, is Fox. Is... There it is. It's on Fox. There it is. But that, no, no. What do you mean that's where... There it is. Adding to the controversy. Fuel the fire. What, Fox? Yeah. Fox is owned by Disney. Exactly. <laughs> it's all the same shit. <laughs> Did you know that? That Fox and ABC are owned by the same company? Isn't that wild? That is wild. And also... Just just goes to show you just how much they just pin each other against each other. It's but crazy. I, I mean, I have beef with the producers. I understand why Ken Jong and Robin Thicke of walked course. off. Of course. Why are we giving this schmuck a, a platform? platform? Exactly. Why? 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 It's like it's it's essentially. I mean, here's the thing. Rudy Giuliani is not making waves in society. Most people think of Rudy Giuliani He's as a, a joke. schmuck. He's a clown. Even, even the Republicans think Rudy Giuliani is a fucking clown. Nobody takes him seriously. No, it, but it is akin, if you will, on a small scale to SNL bringing on Trump before the presidency. Akin in a very well, small scale. Well, they had scale. to. Yeah, I guess they had to. They have to give they... equal time to Hillary and him. That's how it works. They didn't, SNL didn't bring on Hillary, did they? Yeah, she was on. Was she? Yeah, of I course she was. She Regardless... Was Regardless, <laughs> Rudy, an absolute joke. There's absolutely no reason. What else is going on in the news? What else is going on in the news? We got we got controversy over at Spotify. You hear about this? Oh, I did. Neil Young. Ready? Neil Young was fed up with... Uh, uh, oh, hold on. <laughs> hold on. It's Neil Young's frustrations with Spotify go far beyond COVID-19 vaccine misinformation. So he's left... Uh, Spotify over Joe Rogan. Right. The Joe Rogan podcast. Joe Rogan has had many controversial people on. Yes. Experts in their fields to yes. discuss certain things. Experts in their fields who have quote from Joe Rogan's Instagram video recently uh-huh. differing opinions in the mainstream media. Yeah. And Neil Young said, fuck it. It's COVID-19 misinformation. Goodbye. And he's off. And then it came out recently. Well, here's what here's here's the thing that uh, the follow up article the next day. This is on Engadget. Neil Young was fed up with Spotify's shitty sound quality. Anyway, the music the musician felt better after his music was reform re- removed from the platform this week. Listen, so I, here's so so I'm gonna start by saying this: Neil Young, ahead. very yeah. talented guy. Who doesn't love Neil Young's music? It's all about free speech. Isn't I it? haven't listened to a Neil Young song since I watched uh, like a movie with it in the score. So there was a very, very specific thing. So Joe Rogan, if you if you go to his Instagram and watch this 10-minute video where he kind of explains that not only does he just want to be someone who has a who just has a conversation with someone, he brings on people of a differing who has a differing opinion from the mainstream so that he can get all the information. But he said he wants to do better and bring on people who have one one uh, thought process and then bring on someone who has another thought process back to back so they can then compare. I, I like that approach. I do think Joe Rogan is backpedaling a little bit, but why wouldn't you? He's because never... you make a hundred million dollars. You're a, you you are a Joe Rogan truther. And I'm that's not fine. a Joe Rogan truther. I stopped listening to his podcast for a while. I took a break from him for a long time. It got boring to me. Yeah. He was having too many scientists. Like I like when he has the comedians on and they talk shit. Yeah, the one the That's one episode like. of Joe Rogan that I listen to is whenever Dave Chappelle's on because I'm always curious what Chappelle's gonna bring. Dave Chappelle's been on once recently, <laughs> so whenever he's on, 
<laughs> he also was on with uh, with Darren. With what's his name? Uh, he was on for like five minutes. Yeah, he came back. Listen end. to that one. Oh, good. <laughs> Good, you're really well read on Joe Rogan's podcast. Prior to that, years ago, I was listening to Joe Rogan but here's until my I point. realized. Here's my point. Neil Young was somebody who made, he was a folk hero, okay? He made his uh, rise to fame by raging against the machine. Yeah, keep on rocking in the free world. the man. Keep on rocking in the free world. No censorship. Yeah, that's his whole MO. Now he's raging on behalf of the machine. And then when you dig a little deeper, like I said, the next day, he was fed up with Spotify's shitty sound quality. Now, this is a known thing. Spotify's sound quality sucks. Yes. Compared to Apple Music and, and uh, Kanye's title, it's not as good, Okay. <laughs> That was one of the big selling Is points Kanye of title. title. I don't even know if it's Jay Z's title. No, Kanye. I thought Jay Z was title. Kanye. Kanye. One of the big. I think Pablo was like the first release. Whatever that. Yeah, we'll was. figure it out. But my point is this: Neil Young has his own streaming service. Right. Neil Young has look. Go to neilyoungarchives.com, and you could subscribe. The minimum plan is twenty dollars a year. Not a bad price. If you want to rock in the free world. I got to tell you, I like Neil Young. I'm not listening to Neil Young for $20 a year. No. But my point is, he's leaving Spotify so that people who want to listen to him will buy it directly from him. Instead of getting fractions of a penny per play, he's going to get $20 a year. Minimum. So there is an argument to be made, and I'm not sure because I'm not Neil Young. There's an argument to be made on both sides. One, Neil Young saw an opportunity and said... I don't agree with what Joe Rogan is doing, possibly, but also I can leave and make more money. Uh huh. So there's the opportunity to go fuck Spotify. Who's coming with me? Turns out only Joni Mitchell is really come with him. We have we've had a which few sucks others because break. Joni Mitchell's fantastic. We've had a few other geriatric artists break away from Spotify as well. Yes, but here's the thing: nobody's listening to them on that streaming service anyway. No. Yeah. Eh. Spot, I don't think Spotify cares. I mean, I Spotify doesn't care because they're making all their money from Joe Rogan. Then I'm making all their money from archive Joni Mitchell songs. Although Blue is one of my favorite albums. Regardless, yeah. If Beyonce were to leave, you know damn well Spotify would drop Joe Rogan. Yeah. But because it's just, it's all a money play from everyone all around. The reason why the reason why Joe Rogan is is keep trying to keep his audience happy by saying i will do better and bring on people but he does he had sanjay gupta on for two and a half hours i know so he does it already this is a non-issue he does the, that occasionally only, and he and i'm sorry but joe rogan was like the guy is pretty far left they paint him as this right wing uh, guy he he endorsed bernie sanders he had bernie sanders on during the election i know he, that. i was literally listening to uh, don't cancel me jordan peterson was on a few weeks ago i was listening to that four hour epic saga he was singing obama's praises calling obama one of the best presidents we've had in the last few decades the guy's pretty left people latch on to one thing when they hear you go against the mainstream because they don't hear it from the source themselves they hear what cnn is saying about it it's very and he's very damaging to CNN's business model, to all cable news, so all podcasts are. They're very damaging. Like they are CNN, Fox News, all those guys are bleeding, bleeding, bleeding viewers. It's very interesting, no less. I, I'll tell you this: I'm not a huge Joe Rogan fan because at this point, when you have a massive platform, when you've had it for as long as he's had, which has been quite a while at this point, and he still lives on the laurels of. I never expected this to be this way. Well, sir, you have $100 million in your pocket from Spotify, and you've had it for a couple years now. So fuck you. You know the size of your platform. You know that if you bring on someone controversial, it's going to be controversial, and it's going to give you numbers. Don't act like you don't. That's my my issue with Joe Rogan. But my point is he's not giving his own opinion most of the time, especially on things he doesn't know about. It's the guest. And he has guests from all across the spectrum. And I think we're all adults, and I don't think we should be censoring anybody. Let me make up my mind for my damn self. And it, here's the thing. All this misinformation, a year ago, if you said that cloth masks don't work, you were a heretic. Look at that. We had to double mask in the past few months because of fucking Omicron. You know why? Because the cloth masks never worked. Right. You have to have a medical grade or an N95 or K and a 95. Correct. If you said this fucking virus probably came from the lab in Wuhan, 
You, you would have been in a, a, you a conspiracy been at the theorist. Yes. You were, people were actually deplatformed from Facebook, from Instagram, from YouTube for saying those things a year and a half ago. Now, it's the common fucking uh, idea. CNN, Sanjay Gupta himself did an hour-long uh, thing where he interviewed Fauci about it. Yeah. He asked Fauci about it. That was, it was misinformation. You cannot say, cancel somebody because of misinformation because that may actually very well end up being the truth. We cannot say free speech if you, I agree with it. It has to be free speech for all. And if you have a better idea, put it out there in the marketplace of ideas and let's be adults and decide that. And way. That's what makes this country great. And, and God bless America. <laughs> and let's actually do the research on things yeah. fully before we come to a conclusion. Uh, but the thing is, we're, we, we are well past that in the age of America right now with everything that's going on. If there is a thought that goes out that is believed to be true, huh. it is not believed to be true, it is true. If there is a thought that is out there that's believed to be controversy, it is not believed to be controversy, it is controversy. A lie, and that is the true issue at hand. A lie races around the world before the truth even laces up its boots. I think wow. Sam, uh, Mark Twain said that or something. I'll say this at the end of the day. Huh. I'm still not a huge... I was never a huge Joe, fan of Joe Rogan's podcast in the first place because I think he's kind of fucking boring as a host. I do. He's all right. Some of his guests are interesting. He's a fucking boring host. That's I'd much it. rather listen to Smart Listen and enjoy my day, personally. I Shout it. out to fucking those three. Yeah. Fantastic pod. What a wonderful crew. But huh. what else is happening in the world? Let's finish off with one more thing. Eh? You want to do one more? Let's go to... Let's see what's going on in the news. Pete Davidson, huh? What about this Pete Davidson character? What a, what a, what a, what a, he, who's the more uh, successful person who failed up, him or Donald Trump? It's very, very close. <laughs> Different it's, fields, but. I'll say this, Pete Davidson had a higher hill to climb, so good for him. You yeah. know, Donald Trump came from millions and millions, here's your $4 million, here's your $4 million allowance, Don, Donnie, enjoy yeah. your life. You know, Pete was from Staten Island and had nothing. So good for him for being 17 and, and going to stand-up clubs and all that shit. Yeah. And you know what? At but the is end he of, funny? At the end of the day, you know I'm a, I'm a huge advocate for mental health. Big deal. He's got, you know, some serious issues. However, there's a lot of people who have a lot of mental issues who are a lot funnier than Pete Davidson. Oh, yeah. But how, how, does, he, how does he score what he scores? He's got to have a schlong of all schlongs, right? That's what I've heard. I've I've heard that, uh, other that, comics say it that they've seen his his member and it is quite large. It must be that. It has to be that because it can't be his his his, he's, his he's, wonderful personality. It's not his it charm can't be or his, his wit. His chiclet sized teeth. No. It it can't be his his decade long SNL run of of mediocrity. Yeah, it can't be that. But I. But schlong can only take you so far. Schlong is good for a month and a half. Is it? I don't know. It depends, I guess. Ask women. <laughs> Ask other men who enjoy the schlong. <laughs> Personally, I would imagine month and a half, maybe six tops is probably the benchmark for good schlong. If yeah. you're really slinging that schlong, a year and change. Wow. But if you look at his track record. I Ariana would, Grande. It, it can't they be, were engaged, weren't they? I don't know. How long were they together, though? Ariana Grande and him were engaged. It can't be that long. What I'm saying is... Schlong can only take you so far. You have to also be an engaging, fun member of society. Huh. What happened between Ariana Grande and Pete Davidson? Uh, they enjoyed a whirlwind relationship in 2018 and even got engaged. However, One year. It wasn't meant to be, and the 27-year-old singer ended up telling the comedian, thank you, next, <laughs> after admitting in her Vogue interview that the romance was unrealistic. Great I guess song. the schlong was too large. I mean, it becomes unmanageable after a certain point. Or, you know, I'm sure, it gets, I'm sure you get worked in and all that stuff, but eventually huh. you get bored. It's the same schlong, and if the schlong is not as good as the personality... If the personality's not as good as the schlong, then you won't get along. Exactly. It's uh. the age-old adage. Sorry, Pete. We're not fans. We respect the rise of mediocrity and the fact that somehow, some way, you've duped America into loving you, but it ain't flying on this pod. No. Well, we did it. We did. Muzzle to you. Muzzle and to me. There we are with this lovely floral... Patterned. Listen, we're starting small. We're, we're going to upgrade. We're going to make big moves soon. Big moves. Each episode, you're going to see us. Eventually, we'll have a $100 million contract to Spotify, and people will be upset with us. Can't wait. Once you know you've made it when you've been canceled. 
That's true. It's absolutely true. Well, you know you've made it when the threat of cancellation is there daily. Looming. Yeah. In the background. And then you really know you've made it when you thwart it. Yeah. Well, on that note, good night. Good luck. Good eve. Good day. Good morning.